All right, hey guys, what's up? Uh, tomorrow we are doing the Hero Workout DT, and we're gonna give you guys some tips, strategies, scaling options, and all that stuff. Uh, if you guys want more info, more detailed info, we're gonna go over each individual movement, how to maximize that on the YouTube video. It's gonna be a little bit longer. Uh, you guys can click the link in the description for that. Uh, but for this one, we're just gonna talk about generalities. Okay, so best way for us to scale this is to look at our max shoulder to overhead, and about 50% of that is probably gonna be what's right for most people. The best way to attack this workout, guys, if you're thinking about just generally, you wanna break on each movement right before we move on to the next one, okay? So the classic way to break this is to do 11 deadlifts, drop it, take a second, pick it up, do the 12th, then do eight hang power cleans, pick it up, do the ninth, and then do the six shoulders to overhead and drop it. All right, guys, first we're gonna talk about the deadlift. And for this, what's important to know is is our grip gonna be the failure point? Is that what's gonna be the thing that holds us back? Or is it maybe gonna be our cardio or our, the shoulder to overhead a lot of times is what holds people back? If it is our grip, okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start the workout and do every round of deadlifts with that alternate grip. So Al's gonna show those. You can imagine this is eight, nine, 10, and 11. He's gonna drop it. Take a breath, he's gonna pick it up with his hook grip, that's 12, and then he goes into his hang power cleans. Okay, good, good, sit down. All right, so that's gonna be the way that we wanna break that up if we know our grip's going to fail because that's gonna give us a second to take the pressure off the grip, and then by doing that double, uh, that alternate grip, we take the pressure off the hook grip as well, so that's gonna make it a little bit easier on those forearms, okay? If we have rock solid grip, okay, and we know we're gonna be good there, we're gonna start in our clean grip with that hook grip, okay? Making sure, we're gonna talk about the hook grip here. Uh, we're gonna make a secondary video for that so you guys can dive into that more. Uh, but we're gonna start with the hook grip and really he's gonna go into his clean position and he's gonna go straight through now. Let's say this is 10, 11, and 12. Then he can go right into his hanging power cleans. We're gonna take that all the way to six, okay? Go ahead, drop it down. And basically what we're gonna do then is we're gonna split the workout right in half. Okay, so we're gonna do all 12 deadlifts, we're gonna do six of the hang power cleans, then we'll drop it and we'll pick it back up, finish on seven, eight, nine, and do all six shoulder to overheads as well. Okay, so that then is gonna make our break point during the hang power cleans, not during the deadlifts, okay? Cool. All right guys, so, we're gonna go into the hang power clean styles, okay? Really, there's gonna be two main styles of the hang power clean. One is gonna be significantly faster, but is really gonna flare up your grip. So again, same thing, if you guys struggle with that grip position, you might think about doing the more traditional no bounce style. Al's gonna show us the bounce style and you guys will see the cycle rate of this and how much faster it is, go ahead. What he's trying to do there, guys, is really basically hit that dip position that we would start the dip and load process of a good clean or a pocket clean from, okay? If he goes back to the more traditional style now where he brings it down, he dips and loads to the top of the knee, you can see how he maybe has a little bit more hip thrust now, right? And so in that way, it's gonna get the barbell moving a little bit better, okay? It's a little more powerful, but you can also see how much slower it is. Okay, so those are kind of your two different styles and you guys can play around with which one you like better. If you guys are interested in learning how to do the bounce, I'm gonna go ahead and put another video link in the description here and you guys can dive into that. It's a little bit longer video and goes into it in detail. Good. All right guys, so uh, last thing we're gonna talk about is the shoulder to overhead here, okay? At the beginning, in the general description, we talked about how there's uh, some people are gonna be breaking during the hang power cleans. Some people will break maybe at six or seven, some people will break at rep eight, some people won't break at all, okay? Uh, but what you wanna think about is pairing that last hang power clean, and when we catch, we catch in the dip to start right into the push jerks, so there's no transition time there, okay? So Al's gonna show us, let's say we imagine we're doing the one where we stopped at six on the hang power clean, so he's picking it back up. This is seven, eight, nine, and right overhead, okay? And then he's into his push jerk cycling, and he finishes this round out. Let's hit six, six, good, and drops it down. Good, okay? Now, obviously when he finishes his push jerks, okay, 
you guys will want to drop from overhead. You never want to hang on to that grip. You want to save it as much as possible. Okay, so we're going to let that bar ride itself down. That's your time to take a little bit of a breath to compose yourself before beginning the next round. Okay, biggest thing here on the shoulders to overhead, guys. In my opinion, this is going to make or break your workout. It has to be a good, efficient push jerk. Okay, if you guys are push pressing the barbell with this, unless you have like chuck shoulders, okay, you guys are probably going to die out at some point and you're gonna really start paying uh, some extra tax on your body uh, through doing that and those shoulders die out on you and that's gonna make the whole rest of the workout suffer for you, okay? Also, we wanna set ourselves up where any break we're gonna take is gonna happen either on the deadlifts or the hang power cleans. We do not wanna have to drop the bar pick it up, power clean it, just to get the bar back overhead to do any additional shoulders to overhead. So every round, that is always going to be six unbroken. It has to be done that way. If you're not doing it that way, you've probably messed something up in your scaling or pacing beforehand, okay? Awesome. All right guys, so for our first time in doing DT, and really honestly, this is a great strategy. It works all the way up to like pro level, okay? Um, you can do a sub five minute DT this way. I've done it before. Uh, one of the big things you guys want to think about is our breaks do need to be minimal during this workout. And we're going to try to keep this exact same structure for all five rounds. Okay. So uh, this is kind of a traditional way to do it. He's going to do 11 deadlifts. He's going to break, take a second. This is a good chance for him to maybe switch his grip. He'll finish the last deadlift and do eight unbroken hang power cleans. Then he'll drop it again, take a short break, pick it up, do his last hang power clean and then hit six shoulders to overhead, okay? So let's go ahead, we're gonna watch him go through a full round here. Good. And the big thing, guys, this is a barbell cycling workout. So it's a good opportunity to work on a lot of the things that we've been working on, okay? And making sure that we scale to a weight where the bar is moving about this fast, okay? Drops, last one, and right into hang power please, okay? As you can see, he's going through pretty quick. Weight selection's huge. If the barbell can't move this quick, we need to maybe think about scaling down. Break the breath, finishes his last one, and right into his shoulders to overhead. Very nice transitions, very smooth. Good. And he finishes his last one. Left it. Okay. Whew. Then we take a little breath. Okay, maybe take a peek at the clock, give ourselves a little maybe 10 second break, and then start on to round two. All right, guys, so the second version of DT is really going to be for people who have really good grip, okay? Uh, they lock that hook grip in nice and solid. They don't need a lot of chalk. And so basically what we're going to do is we're going to take out a whole break here, okay? We're going to push that grip a little bit further because we're going to do a big chunk of 18 reps in a row to open up, okay? So Al's going to go through here. He's going to go through all 12 reps. Go ahead and start. And really, guys, what we're doing is we're going to take away that hand switch now. So you notice he has to start with his hook grip on. He has to start in his clean grip, okay? So that way, when he finishes his 12th rep, he can pop right into that back down and then right into that really quick hand power things, okay? So now somebody else will be resting, and we're still moving, okay? Good. Very nice, okay? Take the good. Now he's going to finish his three, and then nice, solid, efficient. Shoulders to overhead. Really nice transition there into the shoulders to overhead. All right. Good. Good. That's his rump. That's our second style. Only go that way if you guys feel like you have a really, really strong grip, and that's going to be the only thing that's going to break down on you. All right, guys. So last one. If you guys are a person whose back likes to blow up, okay, um, so high repetition deadlifts, uh, fast paced deadlifts, or a lot of hang power cleans really flare that back up. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the pressure off that touch and go on the deadlifts, and we're gonna take away all of the negatives, okay? This is a great way to learn how to do the workout, uh, but it is maybe a little bit slower, okay? So I was gonna show us just a couple single deadlifts here. Just show me like two or three. Drops. 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 
So we get a couple things out of that, right? We don't blow our back up because we get a little bit of time in between each, and then we also save the grip a little bit, okay? So what that should allow us to do is maybe go a little bit faster towards the later portion of the workout, okay? And once we get past that 12th deadlift, we're gonna start to pick the pace up a little bit, okay? So he's gonna pick up that last one, he's gonna go through those six hang power cleans and take a quick break again. Last one, he goes through six. Good, he drops it. Quick breath, really quick transition here. He's gonna finish all three. Good, right into his shoulders to overhead. Good. And as soon as he drops it, he's gonna try to follow it back down and start into his singles again. Good. 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 So a few more breaks in there, right? Uh, still gonna get that heart rate up quite a bit. We're still gonna get a lot out of that, uh, but. You guys can play around with where you break the hang power cleans. If six is too many, you guys could do three, three, three. Uh, you just have to feel out how your back's gonna feel. And then obviously make sure every time that we go down, we wanna make sure that we're focused on keeping that core tight and keeping the belly on, not reaching with this big overarched extended position to pick the bar up off the ground, okay? Uh, so this is a really good way if you guys do have a tendency to do that. Scale to the right weight, that's the biggest thing. Don't be a hero here, okay? And then make sure that you guys are breaking those deadlifts early and often. All right, guys, so last thing we're gonna talk about here is scaling and the purpose of the workout, okay? Uh, really important workout to scale appropriately, so make sure you guys listen to your coaches when they're talking to it. If you guys are in between or you have questions, ask the coach, but probably my general recommendation would be to maybe err on the five or 10 pounds lighter side, okay? Uh, and the reason is, is this is a barbell cycling workout, okay? What barbell cycling really is, is making sure that we are moving that barbell with enough speed and pace and really proficiency and efficiency, okay? Uh, to actually get the, the stimulus that we desire out of the workout, okay? So if we don't pick the right weight, then we're not gonna be able to move that barbell efficiently. We're not gonna have sharp, crisp movement, okay? Um, and then we're gonna start to break down and we're not gonna be cycling the barbell anymore. Everything's gonna be singles, right? And we're gonna be struggling and losing our balance and all those bad things that we don't want, okay? So make sure you guys keep that focus in mind, okay? Pick a smart weight, talk to your coaches, um, and I would tell you if you guys are gonna do it prescribed, you should probably in that, be in that area of maybe a 275 clean and jerk or jerk for guys. Ladies, you should be in that boat of maybe 185 to 200 or higher to go at this workout prescribed. Okay guys, uh, last thing we're gonna talk about pacing, okay? Uh, sub five is really kind of the gold standard for this workout. If you guys are gonna be trying it for the first time and you scale that weight appropriately, this is a really fast pace to go through the workout, okay? But if you guys have been close, you may be in that five or that six minute boat, uh, this is a good pace to maybe try to start with, okay? Or if you're JC and you're trying to maybe start out of the gate a little bit faster inside of your workouts, uh, this is a good one to try to shoot for, okay? A lot of people say they're gonna try to do an every minute on the minute. But what happens is you're gonna start to slow down as you get tired, okay? So we wanna get a little bit ahead of the pace the first couple of rounds, okay? So we're gonna try to finish round one around that 50 second mark, and then we'll have about a five second transition break to pick the bar back up. And then we're gonna stay on about that every minute, and I've given you a little bit uh, descending minutes here, so a minute two, a minute three, and then that gives you a minute to finish that last round, okay? Uh, so these are good times and paces to kind of stick to, and if you guys have somebody coaching, watching, judging, they can let you know and have this maybe on a clipboard, and if you guys are really trying to push for that first sub five, that's awesome. Yeah, Jenny just- Sorry, my finger was there. Finger in my camera, okay? <laughs> um, next one, uh, kind of the next boat for beginners is a sub eight, okay? If this is your guys, uh, maybe your first time doing it, uh, we should be in that maybe eight to 10 minute boat, okay? If we're going over that, we didn't scale appropriately. Um, but every 130, okay, or every 90 seconds per round to start the workout is really gonna be a very good pace to stay at. It's casual, it allows you to focus on the efficiency um, and gives you a little bit of rest for your break. So probably about 10 second rest breaks uh, if you guys were doing the 11, eight, and then six uh, strategy, okay? Um, so that's a pretty good strategy, really works very well for people and helps you pace out the beginning of the workout. Last one, just don't die, okay? Just hang on, do your best, follow one of the strategies we just talked about and just uh, just grind through it. It's a pretty tough workout, okay? My personal favorite workout, so uh, I hope you guys enjoy it tomorrow if it's your first time.